Hello everyone, welcome back to Online Darts. Here we are, it's been a while since we've grabbed the asset for a chat all things mm. darts. We've got five or so minutes here now. Paul, how are you? Not bad. Uh, I've been working hard, obviously with the Online Darts Live League, which has been great fun. And it's been my privilege to work on that for the last couple of months. Uh, it's kept me on the pulse of what's been going on, but doing a bit of writing for the Premier League as well and doing some, some other peripheral stuff, which has been terrific and it's allowed me to stay on touch with what's happening. Some surgery on the elbow as well as you look to get back to competitive action? Yeah, I, th I think looking at 2021, I, I wanted to say to myself, you know, not going to Q school because of the opportunity uh, coming up that I could fix some things that have been worrying me for a very, very long time. And a lot of people think that the surgery is on my darts arm. It's not, it's on my left arm but this happened 24 years ago, and I kept saying to myself, at what point of your life are you gonna get this fixed? I could wind up 60, 70 years of age and think, I should have got this done 25 years ago, and I said to myself, in 2021, when there is uh, the opportunity to get it fixed, uh, I'm prepared to go through a couple of surgeries to fix my arm so that I can do darts and other things for a lot longer in my life. The first surgery is done, we're in the process of rehabbing the elbow in preparation for another surgery which will come later in the summer. Last night, a new Premier League champion mm. was crowned and that was the Ferret. Sensational, that's three televised PDC titles in mm. just over six months. What a crest of a wave Johnny Clayton is on right now. Yeah, I think Gerwin Price has got a lot to answer for, don't you? <laughs> I think people referencing that is completely accurate. You look at the way that Johnny Clayton came into his first World Cup with Gezi, and he looked a bit like a scared ferret. But now you look at what has happened after winning the World Cup, and he's turned into a completely different ferret. Uh, I never really uh, took on the ferret nickname that seriously, but now he owns that. And I text Johnny this morning, and I just tried to put across my feelings for him because like everybody else he's, he's like family to everyone because he's so nice to everyone he is a I don't like to use the, the phrase breath of fresh air because he's been part of the sport for a long time in different levels BDO he was great fantastic county player for Pembrokeshire and played for Wales as well at BDO level uh, and home internationals and things like that but he hasn't changed and this isn't going to change Johnny Clayton he is who he is and we love him for it I think Price came into darts because of Barry Bates. What we have with Clayton is a different Clayton because of what Price has unleashed after that World Cup victory. And now we have to genuinely start talking about Clayton as a threat for a world title. That brings me on to my next point rather well, that you don't win Premier Leagues unless you are at the very top echelons mm. of the game. Only world champions and exceptional players win Premier League titles. Yeah. And if you think about the previous champions in the Premier League, Anderson, Taylor, uh, Michael Van Gerwen, I don't... Barney. Yeah, Barneveld. I think there's only, one, there's only two now that haven't won a world title, and that's Wade and Clayton. Now, as to whether they will, they both still can, because Wade's obviously won the UK Open this year. So one of them could get it at 2022 at Alexandra Palace. But I think it's more likely now that Clayton is going to win one other than James, based on current form. But it will be interesting to see them both in the final come next year. Topical question here, mm. off the back of Johnny Clayton's success. He's now won the Masters, he's now won the Premier League, mm. yet he's still outside of the world's top 16 because they are unranked. Yeah. Does this strengthen the call that something needs to change in terms of the ranking to take it away from purely money based where every tournament has ranking value because let's be pretty honest and I'll put it out there right now Johnny Clayton is probably most definitely in the top four players in world darts right now mm. yeah he's not even a seed for Blackpool yeah I've been atop my soapbox for a little bit of time now I've been somewhat on the first step of three since Johnny won the Masters and I think the way that the PDC handled the Premier League situation was very clever. I think having the playoff between Merv and Johnny was perfect. 
Now, if you have the Masters in its format from 2021 going forward, where there's 24 players instead of 16, now, we can't forget that, I don't think he was in the 16, was he? No, he's only there because it was extended. So, we, we talk about Clayton as the ultimate opportunist. When he gets a shot at something, he really does take a full advantage of it. So, with that in mind, if they're going to keep that scenario in place with the Masters at the end of January, where the person who wins the Masters potentially gets the last spot, and if someone's already qualified you know, in the final, they could possibly do one more wild card after that. I really like that. The Last Chance Saloon Masters. It gave that some more grandeur. And that's what that tournament has craved since it was brought in, because it's never been ranked. Now, as far as me getting on top of my soapbox last night, I am now screaming uh, internally. I'm not saying that the PDC and the Professional Dark Players Association have to change it right away. What I'm saying is certain things happen at certain times within sport that make you have to get round the table and say, do you know what? Johnny Clayton's exposed something with the rankings here that maybe does need to be addressed. So when you've got someone who's won three... I got that right, I nearly said two. Three television titles without any ranking money, and he's still at 17th in the world. There's something a little bit wrong with this picture. Now, you can't rank the World Cup. You might try, but I still think it's a brilliant showcase for countries, and I think it should stay as, as it is. Going forward, there is an opportunity here, Phil, for the PDC and the PDPA to get their heads together to not just uh, sort out the uh, fact that something would be ranked, but they have an opportunity here to finally put to bed this whole what is a major thing. If it was me, I would put four or five at the top tier, which are classed as majors. Very similarly to golf and tennis, where a select few events are classed as majors. Now, you may say to me this, well, what about all of the things that Phil Taylor's won in his career and Michael Van Gerwen and others? Does that mean that they would have majors taken away from them? No. We would have a definitive system and a database saying Phil Taylor won this many majors and it wouldn't be up for debate anymore. It would say, of those five, how many did he win? Then he's top of the tree. Michael Van Gerwen will be next, of course. So have five at the top. Premier League, World Grand Prix, World Match Play, Premier League and Worlds. It's pretty simple. They're the ones who've got the most grandeur and the biggest crowds and the biggest prize being, funds. Being said, Premier League twice, UK Open Did, instead? I don't know. Yeah. Match play, Grand Prix, Premier League, Worlds, and what was the other one? UK Open. Up for debate. But there has to be a definitive yeah, yeah. structure. That's why we're having this conversation. Next level, you've got Premier events. Things that are on TV that aren't majors. Things like the Players' Championship Finals and... For me to say that, to take my major away from me, I'm doing this for the benefit of the sport. I would take myself away from being a major champion for the benefit of this game. And then under that, you've got European Tour and Players' Championship events, of course. I would rank most events from there on a points basis. The World Championship would get the most ranking points, but what you could do then is you could have a fairer ranking system, in my opinion, where the world is not as top heavy, but still has more points than the match play and the Grand Prix and the Premier League and the Grand Slam, which will be the fifth one. I just thought of that on the fly. <laughs> so the Grand Slam for me would be top. One year cycle over the two year cycle for you? This is where they come together and look at the benefits of the two. I don't mind the two year cycle on points because People aren't going to be as far apart. there would be a nice little bit of fluctuation. I, th I think you probably have to still have the uh, ranking system for qualification for events. I think that works really well. But if you've got um, a point system for that, for qualifying for events, and then a world ranking system, I think it would be pretty easy to implement that. So I think that one's up for debate, the one or two-year system. Does it make it, like you're talking about, fairer as well, taking... Mm -hmm ranking money out of the equation and playing for points? Yes, I think it does. You look at 500 grand for winning the World Championship, it would almost embellish uh, someone's world ranking if they came out of nowhere. 
I think we've talked about certain players, and I don't want to go into that right now, but an example for me is when Kirk Shepard made the final. He went to, I think it was 21st in the world, and he barely had any ranking money on his, on his rankings. And he, Was he the 21st best player in the world at the time? Absolutely not. Now, to use me as an example, I had played uh, some players' championships in Las Vegas in 2008. I'd played the German Darts Championship. Then I played the Worlds and made the quarterfinals. And I was 44th in the world after three bunches of events. Was I the 44th best player in the world at the time? No. That, to me, was just almost fluffing up my confidence purely because of the fact that I was in the top 50 in no time at all. It's even worse now. We look at people having to, you know, have a great world championship to get inside the top 32. So, again, just to emphasise, this is my opinion. What the PDC do, I'm sure they'll make a fantastic decision. The PDPA have got to get involved for the benefit of the players and for the benefit of the sport. But look at what the PGA Tour have done. They do have their money list on the side and people monitor it. But it's all about the FedEx Cup rankings now. It's very fair. And it's based on who stays on tour, who doesn't stay on tour, and who makes the playoffs. So that in lies a possibility for us to have a tour championship at some point, which would open up another possibility. Well, here's one for you talking about. I was going to bring the, the FedEx up. Mm. Everyone says the Premier League is slightly flaky, shall we say, and you never know. Do you tick the right boxes mm. to get a wild card? Yeah. If you're now definitively ranking every tournament in whatever order you, you think it is, could you then have a race for the Premier League where you pick 10, 12 tournaments across the year mm -hmm. that every 128 tour card holder knows mm. these are the events that the ranking points go on to the Premier League race. Yeah. And at the end of those events, you're 10. Are you Premier League 10 for that year? Yeah. I, I know the PDC are a promotional company and I know they like to have control over who is broadcast and Obviously, Sky Sports have a say over some of their picks as well. And it's worked fantastically well. But this opportunity of, of doing something like this, it would just uh, evolve the sport. And with Eddie Hearn at the, the helm now, he is someone who embraces change, uh, not just from a broadcast perspective, but obviously from uh, a competitive perspective as well. He likes to bring sports into a very different era. And I think Eddie will do an amazing job. I think he may look at things slightly different to Barry. And I think that's exciting. So when he looks at something like this as a possibility and he look, speaks to Matt Porter and all of the board members now, we've, we've seen Marcus uh, make way on the board. Marcus has done an amazing job for the last 25 years. But if someone comes in uh, like Barney Francis and maybe thinks that it's time to juice this puppy up a little, in the words of Vince McMahon, then maybe now's the time to do something like this. Also as well, last one, because I know we'll push for a bit of time, some great news for MAD, Modern Amateur mm. Darts, some ranked or some big TV tournaments announced, uh, tie up here at the Online Darts Live League qualifiers, yeah. really taking the amateur game to the next place. Fast as well. It's, it's really hard to keep up with, if I'm honest, but they've got the events in Gibraltar coming up, so people have the opportunity to go and play in an open tournament against people in the same room and multiple boards. Just amazing what we take for granted over the last couple of years. But that new territories being opened up, uh, the Benelux thing where Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg are coming on board at a, an incredible rate and other countries are going to follow suit. I think Steve Brown's going to need an assistant uh, by the summer because he can't do all of this work on his own. It's impossible. If, he's, if he manages to juggle all this work on his own, he's going to be like the best juggler in the world and he'll have to go to the circus for another job because this thing is exploding at a very incredible rate. It's very exciting for the, the amateur game. I think it's nice for the amateur players to have choice and the fact that the MAD members will have the opportunity to come here to the Online, online Darts Live League just opens up even more narrative. It's amazing. Nico. Tremendous as always, mate. Thank you very much for your time and all the very best, mate. My pleasure.